How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Let Dirt Fly YouTube channel. So today is going to be a little bit different of a day because we are going to be not getting muddy. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're actually going to be cleaning my quad. It's going to be getting the opposite treatment of what it normally gets. So recently I just got a comment saying, hey Marshall, why don't you show us how you wash your quad? Every time we see your quad at the beginning of the video, it's all nice and shiny. It looks almost like it's new. Uh, so today I'm going to show you all the steps I usually do, uh, how to make my quad nice and clean and everything because I'm also gonna be preparing my quad for its 50 hour service at the uh, Can-Am dealership and everything. So uh, I'm gonna kind of take you guys along the ride. Now, um, there's some things I do, gonna be doing a little bit differently because um, I really wanna make sure this thing is spit shine because as a uh, HVAC tech, that's what I do for a living. Um, one thing I hate is when I get to somebody's house and their boiler or furnace is just completely disgustingly dirty and whatnot, it's just, not very cool to work on because you you get kind of disgusting and dirty and everything so why not make the technicians uh life a little easier at the dealership so i'm going to make sure this thing is as clean as i can possibly make it and i'm going to bring you guys along so this way you guys can see all the steps i do so one thing i'm just going to point out real quick you guys is that i am not an expert by any means so if you have any regrets on how to wash your quad properly please consult your owner's manual or dealership to make sure that you do it the correct way because I know one thing I'm gonna be doing today is using a power washer and first thing it says in the uh, Can-Am booklet is don't use a power washer. So, but unfortunately you're gonna have to with these things when you're playing in the mud, it's just something you're gonna have to use because there's no way a garden hose is gonna be taking it off. You'll be out there for hours and a lot of times it does take me hours to clean my quad. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's get, get this thing taken apart and get it all shined up again. All right guys, so Got the chest mount on so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So basically what I'm gonna be doing today, like I said, gonna be stripping this whole thing down. Now the first step I always do before even starting to wash a quad is I like to bring my quad through a stream after we just get done mudding. So we have a nice spot back in our trails over there um, where I'm able to get the quad basically up to the fenders here um, in water. And what that helps do is it kind of helps clear out everything underneath and everything here. Um, gets all the big mucky stuff out so this way um, makes it a little easier to to wash off and stuff obviously as you can tell there's still some stuff on the top that we got to get off but that's all going to come off nice and easy so but uh, that's the first thing i always like to do try to find yourself a stream before leaving wherever you're riding uh just something deep that'll uh kind of get off the majority of the mud all right next step is i like to take off some of the plastics so uh, normally what I like to do is, obviously we gotta pop the seat off here. Get this guy out of the way. And then we're gonna be removing uh, the side panels here. Um, the air intake cover. Uh, usually I take off the gauge cluster, the, um, the top here to the uh, radiator. And then another thing we're gonna be doing here is gonna be taking off the foot wells here. Um, just to get them out of the way. Uh, mud likes to kind of pack in there, so we're gonna get those guys off. And I'm also gonna get the uh, the tires off as well because I know there's a bunch of grass stuck in um, behind the hubs and everything like that. So again, wanna make sure that this thing is nice and clean for the dealer, uh, so this way it makes it nice and easy for the technician. All right guys, so with the Can-Ams, you have a couple of pop pins. Some of mine are missing, so if yours are missing already, a little bit easier, but um, right side of quad, you got pin there. Get a pin underneath up there, one more behind there. And on this side you have the same thing except there's a couple more pins down below. Now, uh, in order to get in there, we also have to pop this guy off and then there's gonna be a couple Phillips head screws right behind here. So, gotta get those guys out as well. Just get off, just pop that out. And this guy, same thing, just kind of pops up here. Just kind of Grab onto it, there we go. Now this I usually take off and completely remove. So, should be a little harness back here, a little clip. I like to kind of usually stuff that down in the air and takes this way, kind of keep it dry because I don't like to get up here with uh, any kind of water. Put these guys off to the side here. Add to my collection. All right, and then here's our Phillips head screw right here. We're gonna have to remove one just like on the other side. So to get this guy out, I usually pop that guy first, pull down here. This guy kind of folds out. First time you do this, it does not come out that easy. Not gonna lie. 
if your quad is brand new, it does not like to come out. So you can see all kinds of fun stuff. There's mud all baked onto the exhaust. I'm gonna try to get that off because, so as you can probably see, got all kinds of mud and stuff like that in here. Not crazy bad, but pretty, pretty good. It's got some stuff packed onto the exhaust. I'm gonna try to see if I can get that off. Uh, gonna try to at least, but see what happens. And uh, like I said, I just gotta pop off the other side as well. And we're also gonna be popping out the footwells because mud likes to get trapped in underneath. So I'm gonna be doing that as well. All right guys, I'm gonna end up just using this camera since it's a lot easier, but it's gonna pop this guy off while I'm kind of over here. Just gonna grab the back. Just gonna do a lot of this one handed because it's gonna be easier than using the chest mount, I feel like. The reason I'm popping this off, I wanna clean the pre-filter. Oh, it's actually not too bad for the uh, CVT. Add this to the pile of good stuff. I'm gonna be using the power washer in a little bit here. Gotta change out that pit. That's gonna do some damage if I leave that guy on. How's everything else looking up here? Pretty good, pretty good. All right, let's get this guy popped up now. All right, so this side's a little bit more uh, challenging to get off because uh, the flap's a little bit bigger, but not too much harder. But same thing, I just like to pop this guy right here. This one's always a little bit tighter from here. Do that. Then do this. If I can do it, try to do this all one-handed. There we go. Then just kind of give her a good pull. Oh, I got I'm gonna have to loosen. I'm gonna put this on the other side. Like that. There we go. Now she should come sliding out. Or not. There she Get this bad boy off there. Looks like it's a Can-Am graveyard over here. All right, once we got all the sides off here, got the seat off, got all the plastics up top off. I do like to cover this all up, up here with a towel of some sorts, because even though I try to be careful with the power washer, you can always get water down here. Obviously don't want to get water in your intake, and also don't want to get this plug here uh, wet because that'd really suck to create some electrical issues. So I like to make sure all that stuff is blocked off and doesn't get anything in it. So now this is something I don't do every time I wash a quad. We're gonna be taking off the footwells because I know uh, mud likes to pack under here. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. And also we'll be able to get underneath um, underneath the motor and everything, get the mud out from under there because they are going to be changing the oil and then. Uh, I'm also going to have them go over all the factory clamps and stuff just to make sure because when you're going deep, don't want any leaks and whatnot. And then, so we're also going to be getting the tires off this thing. Might do a rotation because I haven't rotated these guys yet since I've had them on the quad. But I know there's a ton of grass stuck in the CVs. So, let's get the tools out. I believe we're going to need a bunch of 10 mils and then some Torx, Torx bits. Alright guys, to actually remove the footwell after you get all the bolts out and everything. You see it's loose now. But uh, here comes the fun part. So you have to kind of step on the footwell like this and give your plastics a pull. I know it's a scary sound and feeling, but it's the only easiest way i found to do it. I haven't broken them yet. Can-Am seems to have some pretty sturdy plastics. And then just kind of have to get it over top of the foot piece here now. Usually does clear it. Usually. There she goes. All right, guys. So got both footwells off. There's a couple extra little tabs you had to take out for the uh, right side. Well, that I did, forgot to mention. They kind of attach the uh, inner fender well to the uh, footwell. But uh, it's just kind of sad scene. Look at my quad. <laughs> I said this is a little bit drastic compared to how I normally clean my quad. Normally tires aren't coming off, normally footwells aren't coming off. Everything else I basically do. Um, well, I'm also going to be taking off the rack because, I don't know if you guys saw in the background, I got something. Yep, that is the back bumper for the 850 XMR. I mean, it's basically the XT bumper, but um, got it obviously in the Manta green. I got all the brackets and everything. I had to kind of make my sell this kit because they actually don't sell it as a kit so um, I'm waiting for a couple more bolts and 
nuts that come in they're all back ordered because of a uh, lovely coronavirus but uh so this is basically as far as i'm gonna take the quad apart itself but the reason i took the wheels off is this is what you get when you ride in some grassy places look at all this look at all the freaking grass up in the bearing and everything so i'm gonna probably take the hub off um haven't decided just yet and see if how much i can get out of here uh other side got the same kind of crap and then back here as well surprisingly this side doesn't have anything at all that side looks pretty good so gonna get all the grass out real quick and then next step after that is gonna be firing up the power washer for the first time doing our first pass and whatnot and getting the majority of the mud off and then i'm gonna go over some of the products i use as far as oops sorry kind of weird spot with lighting there we go hello um I'm gonna go over some of the products I use as far as uh, soaps and uh, everything in detergents. Uh, some of the stuff I like to use. All right, stick around. All right guys, sorry about all the background noise. Dad's working on some stuff, working on a hitch for his truck, or a hitch for the receiver rather. But uh, so, got everything off. Also took the rack off, like I said, because I'm gonna be doing the bumper. Um, so I need to get in there. But uh, just wanted to do some warnings with power washers, because obviously, gotta be careful with them. They are power washers they have a lot of pressure behind them so you gotta make sure you kind of keep your distance from any kind of electrical stuff and kind of stickers because they, they will blast them right off and everything so uh it's gonna fire up my power washer right now get it all set up and then uh get some of the uh main chunks of uh, mud off guys got the uh, quad all power washed off everything's looking a lot better now got the majority of all the mud off and everything now as far as soaps go one thing I like to use is chemical guys uh, tough mudder I actually originally bought it for my truck not for the quad but it does the trick just fine now sometimes I do use a um, foam cannon in this case I'm not going to use it I'm just gonna go straight for just right out of the bucket and everything should be okay but uh it's gonna go ahead and suds it all up and start scrubbing away getting all the nooks and crannies and stuff i use a uh this is a regular wash mitt yeah uh, one of their brushes for tires and then also another brush for tires so gotta put the power washer in here real quick just to stir it up but uh basically just get it all cleaned up now and start sudsing away and then eventually i'm gonna have to also Get at all that over there, all the parts. And yeah. Dad, you're doing yeah. Yeah, my dad's playing with this hitch there. So, all right, guys, let me uh, suds her up and clean it all off. All right guys, got the thing all washed up. You see, looks great now. Almost looks looks like new. So now the next step I like to do is I get a nice drying towel, and dry the whole thing off and everything. Make sure I dry out all the switches. You'll see how I do that. I got a little small leaf blower um, to try to kind of dry all that stuff out. You can use compressed air too. I got that, but um, it's a little easier. I got my little leaf blower works great. Um, then after, I get everything dried off. I'm gonna go over the next step and um, how I get that nice, nice shine out of it. Alright, guys. So got it all dried off, but you can see it's just missing something. It's not as shiny as she used to be. She's getting a little scratched up and everything from the trail. Got a couple of kinks in the plastics from when I flipped it. Oops. But uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't shine like she used to and everything. So one thing I like to use 
And now I'm not affiliated with the guy, these guys at all, but if, if they'd like to, let me know. But again, another chemical grass product, their natural shine. I just put it on a uh, little, uh, basically foam microfiber pad. And then uh, basically just coat the, coat everything nice and light. And then I kind of uh, wipe off any access and stuff with a, another microfiber towel and it gives it a nice deep shine, kind of restores shine black in, back into the black plastics, especially these guys since they get really scratched up. So makes it look good. So yeah, it's gonna shine her up now and uh, catch you guys in a minute. You guys can see completely restores the shine i mean geez if you didn't see all the little micro scratches just in there you almost think that's a brand new fender and everything from a distance she's a five footer but gotta do the other side so this is a little after and from the other side you can actually see a transition over here where i haven't done yet and yeah all dull and all scratched and stuff so gotta do this side now and then next time you guys probably see the quad um, might have the rear bumper on it because I'm going to mess with that right now because, um, like I said, the rack's got to go back on and everything now. So, um, basically got to put all the, put all the bracketry and stuff in there and got to figure out all that stuff yet, but should be good. See how everything turns out. All right, guys. So it's actually a day later. Uh, that bumper did not want to play nicely to go on there. Uh, but I finally got it. Um, looks awesome on there. So. Should be awesome. This gives me a nice spot to actually uh, yank on and stuff when we're stuck in the mud and everything. Um, this top side gets held in by the rack, but the problem I had getting on here is these brackets here. Um, these two side brackets. They just did not want to play nicely to get in here. Um, the nuts are actually on the back side <laughs> and there's like no access. So you should have seen what I had to do to get it out, but. I should make it work. So today's goal is to get it all complete here. Um, normally it doesn't take me two days to wash my quad. Usually it takes me about an hour to, hour or two, um, if that. But um, yeah, it's got to get the wheels back off here again. I just put them on temporarily so I could go put it away over in the garage. But uh, next step is I'm going to get the rack all cleaned up, get that guy back on, just kind of start cleaning every single piece and just kind of throwing one each one on uh, one at a time until everything's back on there. And, Next time you see it should be nice and shiny. And I'm gonna show you guys how I wash the wheels um, as a separate step and whatnot. But as far as all the uh, plastic pieces go that we have over here, basically just gotta scrub them all, scrub them all up. Uh, you, I use the um, that uh, natural shine from Chemical Guys on there to uh, help um, just give it a nice shine and whatnot. You can see this is some sitting overnight. Everything looks awesome, it's nice and shiny. Almost looks brand new. So love using that stuff. Like how I just kind of set the dash on here just so I could make sure there was no check in li engine lights. I always like to make sure after washing the quads um, that everything's working good and that because um, when you're spraying water and sensors and stuff like that, usually the two don't get along together um, very often, but looks like we did, did okay yesterday. So, all right, so let me go ahead, set the single for time lapse again, and then. Uh, I said, gonna do rack first, probably just gonna do the wheels last, get everything else back together first, and uh, should be good to go. All right guys, so got basically all the plastics back on for the most part. Got the rack back on, got all the side plastics, the top plastics here. And then uh, obviously both footwells, um, right inner cover, which I didn't clip yet. There you go, all better. Um, didn't get the uh, inner fender wells yet, and because I'm gonna be taking the wheels off tomorrow, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, clean these bad boys. See, nice clean quad and terrible looking wheels. Also got the seat over there. I wanna show you guys what I do with uh, that guy because uh, there's some other products on that as well to get a nice deep conditioning of the leather. But didn't get to the belt today either, but um, it's gonna wrap it up just for the evening here As you can tell it's getting a little dark on me here. So I'm just gonna have to catch you guys tomorrow All right guys, so it's like day like what 10 right now <laughs> trying to wash my quad 
Um, yeah, so it's actually literally a week later because the weather in New York has not been very nice. Um, literally has been cold, disgusting, raining, snowing, and every other kind of weather you can think of. Um, we've kind of had it recently in the last uh, week here or so. So finally it's beautiful. It's almost like 70 degrees today. It's gorgeous. So uh, finally got the quad back out. Haven't got much further. The uh, only thing I got is um, finally got the rest of the stuff to finish off my bumper on here so that all looks good. And I also got some goodies from RJWC. Not, not an exhaust, unfortunately, but got one of their shift handles. I wanted to go with the, the non-billet one, the nice, um, what do you call it? I guess like some kind of plastic they use here because um, it looks more OEM. And then I also got their really nice winch hook uh, holder. So put that on the front so this way. Just a little bit easier access when you're in mud you don't have to reach down into the mud and everything so this makes things a lot nicer so today's goal is to finally finish up my quad um <laughs> i know this sounds like it's a big project and everything like that because just trying to make my quad look nice um for the dealer and whatnot because um like i said earlier in the video um it's going in for its 50 hour service so i want to show them that i take care of this thing normally i don't go into this extent of washing my quad Usually it's mostly just power washing all the mud out of the, all the nooks and crannies and then um, basically suds and everything down. I do, do like I said, use the natural shine on the fenders and stuff um, just to give it like, just to help protect the plastics, um, helps the mud kind of um, flake off a little bit easier and whatnot. But um, yeah, so today we're finally gonna be doing the wheels. We're gonna get those situated and the, the seat. So as I just walk over to the wheel right now, well, one of the wheels, here we are. There he's see they're all nice and muddy and disgusting so we're gonna try to get rid of that the best we can now it's always important to know that you'll never ever the second your quad rolls off the showroom floor get your quad to look as good as it originally did unless you do not ride it it uh mud gets trapped everywhere you can even see after i've washed my quad here all the mud and stuff i scrubbed all this too and everything and it's still all kinds of not perfect in there. Obviously the plastics and stuff up here look nice because I'm able to detail those a little bit better. But yeah, all the, you can see it up close, see all the little brush scratches and stuff, all my nice kinks I, I'm gonna roll my quad. So it's really hard to make these things perfect. But right now we're gonna start off by washing the tires. I'm gonna show you the products I use for that and uh, catch you in a second. All right guys, so for the wheels, um, I use, they sell, um, chemical guy sells a uh, wheel cleaner called uh, Diablo. Um, that's usually soap I, soap I use, uh, but today I'm just gonna be using the Tough Mudder, but I am using the Diablo spray wheel cleaner. That'll help break down a bunch of the dirt and everything, and then finish it up with some um, McGuire's uh, Hot Shine. The reason I like this stuff is because um, you kind of just spray it and you're done. Um, whereas other, um, like the a lot of the Chemical Guys products, they do have one spray one, um, but a lot of it's uh, more of a dressing, uh, so you have to actually like rub it into the tire and whatnot. And with um, when you have a lot of like writing on the wheels, like mine do, and a lot of like um, big tread and everything, this does not come out looking as good. So I just, that just sprays right on, it looks nice and deep and shiny, and yeah, works good. So we're gonna go ahead, rinse off this wheel first, get it kind of cleaned up, and then we'll spray on the wheel cleaner, get that all on there, dry it off, and then we'll have to do the other three. All right guys, so once I get the uh, tire basically all cleaned up, now the tread obviously I don't really clean because, well, it's the tread. It's gonna get dirty the second you pull away, so there's no point in really cleaning it. But uh, once you get everything cleaned up nice, you see it looks pretty good. Uh, then I dry the wheel off. I try to use some, sometimes this guy, it's a little bit of air, just to um, clear it up. What the heck happened to my lug nut there? Nice. Um, just to clear it up, but then uh, basically after that, um, go ahead and spray on our good old McGuire's and finish her off. All right, guys, as you can see, a little bit of before and after, huge difference. Looking at the quad from the back now, the quad looks awesome because it's all nice and clean. So, got three more tires to do, and then gonna go ahead and uh, go to the seat after this. All right guys, so one of the very last things I like to do is this seat. So for some reason with Can-Am, and this could be other brands too, even after I wash the seat with power wash or whatever, scrub it all down and stuff, there's still 
I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like all these little mud stains. Even look at this one. This one's like really prominent. So what I've kind of found out is uh, this stuff works really good. So another chemical guys product. This is their spread spreadable, ah, sprayable leather cleaner. There we go. Um, I just use this stuff, one of their horsehair brushes and a microfiber towel, and then go ahead and just scrub it all down, spray it right on there, and then uh, clean it all up. All right, guys, so finally got the seat all done. You see no more mud streaks or anything like that. They all came out really nice. And let's just take a step back and look at the whole finished product. It looks 10 times better. No more mud. But we all love mud, right? <laughs> yeah, so obviously it's gonna get completely plastered with mud again very soon on the channel here. Um, but this is just something I wanted to do for you guys. Actually, one of our subscribers actually asked to see if we could do a video like this. And um, I was like, why not? Perfect time to do it because I was cleaning the quad up anyway to get it ready for its service. But um, yeah, this is kind of what I do. Not every time I clean it, uh, but I try to keep um, my investment nice and clean and keep it in good shape and whatnot. It also gives me a good time to inspect everything, make sure everything is in good shape. Um, so if you guys want to see more videos like this, please leave a comment down below because um, you guys are actually killing it down there. You guys are really supporting us and it's really pushing us to make more videos and everything um i apologize they're not they aren't coming out as fast as um they were over the summer uh part of the reason is is my dad and i have a um hvac service company and winter is our time to shine um with the heating and everything we do oil heat um uh, so been really busy lately and then like i said mother nature wasn't playing nicely either this damn cat every damn video nice take crap for everybody but make sure you guys are liking subscribing hitting that notification bell, all that great stuff because it's really helping us out. Like I said, you guys are killing it down below in the comments. We love the support. Um, any suggestions for videos you guys might wanna see, make sure you leave them down below and uh, we'll just have to catch you guys next time. And don't forget to check out our Instagram and TikTok. We are new on there, so not many videos just yet or anything or pictures, but uh, that's where you'll catch a lot of the action first before it actually hits YouTube. So make sure you guys are following on there as well. Catch you guys next time. Have you forgotten away?